Yeah, today uh, we have are going to deal with the Paschal mystery, which is a really, really uh, essence or maxim or gist of our Christian faith. Uh, so we will deal with uh, uh, today and uh, uh, next week. Then we wrap up uh, this uh, whole session with the Paschal mystery. Mm. Yeah, the relationship between team uh, and the uh, uh, Pascal mystery or passion, uh, maybe uh, we get to that later. I will explain uh, first what is a uh, Pascal mystery is all about. It's just simply put it, Pascal mystery is one of the central concept of Catholic church or Christianity as a whole relating to the history of salvation, right? So um, Paschal mystery is a uh, course over, right? Paschal meaning uh, uh, coming from uh, Old Testament, right? So it's uh, um, a course over uh, from the one side to the other, maybe uh, opposite side. Well, there is uh, some uh, bridge or something like that. And, uh, but in the New Testament, Paschal Mystery, uh, it's uh, about uh, Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. So we uh, call it Paschal Mystery. Why we, sh uh, we call it Mystery? Uh, this is we cannot uh, simply understand correctly, uh, easily. So um, not only Catholic, uh, Anglican, Orthodox churches celebrate uh, this mystery on Easter, especially Easter and uh, during every Eucharist. Right. Um, it has uh, many things to do with the mystery, which I'm going to uh, explain to you one by one. So why we uh, call a, a mystery? I said it's about the Jesus life, which includes his, uh, you know, he had a really hard time ever since he got a baptism from uh, uh, John the Baptist. And then uh, uh, he proceeded his mission. But uh, uh, during his mission, yeah, sometimes he maybe the gospel didn't give uh, much in detail. But according to gospel, all the four gospels, we don't see any, uh, you know, happy moment uh, uh, for him. Simply, uh, there is no scene, story of Jesus lapping. I don't know if uh, I'm not mistaken, you see. But there are some uh, uh, stories or some phrase where Jesus cry. And as you know, uh, the passion of the Christ, you know, uh, Mel Gibson's passion for the Christ. What is the name of the movie? Yeah, something like that, right? So uh, he vividly described uh, how Jesus uh, died. Indeed, God killed him mm -hmm. by colonizers and a puppet of, uh, at the time of the Jesus. Anyway, it's uh, full of uh, unfortune and uh, misery and cruelty. Yeah, from the, the human perspective, right? And, but uh, when we uh, go deeper uh, with the passion, death, and rejection of Jesus Christ, we have to say it is a mystery. It is, uh, we cannot fully uh, apprehend uh, the, that mystery. 
Then what is the relationship baptism and the passion or Paschal mystery? Fundamental question in the first gospel. I mean, the first gospel means not Matthew, Mark, according to the year the gospel was written. The gospel, uh, the Mark uh, is the, uh, the first uh, gospel according to the year uh, when uh, the writer uh, written, uh, wrote that, that uh, gospel. The important question is, uh, who was Jesus? Who were his disciples? Think about Peter, you know. He trusts, uh, Jesus created him very much. But uh, he confessed Jesus was Savior. But as you all of know, that he uh, betrayed him. Then we have to ask what kind of Savior he is. What is his nature? Nobody really understood his nature or identity, including his family and disciple, like Peter. But like uh, those who uh, doesn't belong, uh, didn't belong to the family or his disciple, maybe Samaritan women or um, other, you know, marginalized people, they recognize, hey, they uh, 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 recognize Jesus as a savior. Mm -hmm. Then we have, uh, yeah, nobody. Uh, really understood his nature or identity, including his family and disciple. At the last suffer, uh, Peter and other disciple pledged, asserted to they seek, stick out neck out for Jesus, meaning uh, they cannot dedicate uh, their life for Jesus, but abandoned and ran away from Jesus in a couple hours. We all know at the, uh, you know, right after the last of uh, Jesus made a, a, a notice of passion three times in old gospel, right? In which, especially in, in uh, I'm talking about uh, the gospel of Mark in which Peter rejected a Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. Because uh, he cannot uh, take it, he cannot accept Jesus, our Savior, maybe save uh, their uh, country, you know, so that uh, he could uh, escalate it to the higher position in, in the country, in the regime. Maybe... Uh, Jesus is a top, and then uh, he's a second person, you know, things like that. So uh, when Jesus said to him, I uh, will be supper, even that, and uh, resurrected, to which he, I mean, Peter strongly rejected. In return, Jesus rebuked him saying, get behind me, Satan, Satan. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man, things of humans. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You have thousands of time already. This is a part of a Pascal mystery. So uh, here is the, you know, relationship between uh, his disciple, especially, you know, leader of disciples, Peter. He's, he's got, uh, uh, you know, a lot of scold uh, from Jesus. Not only this time, but a couple times, more than a couple times, you see. Indeed, he's betraying him. People lose their, uh, you know, uh, Made his sound three times at the dawn. So uh, Jesus said clearly, Can you drink at the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? Here, uh, Jesus mentioned, Yeah, drink of cup I drink, we know that. 
But here, why he brought the baptism here? What is the relationship, the baptism uh, with the, uh, his passion or his death, resurrection? Simply Pascal mystery. Here is such a, uh, a definite uh, interrelation of his death and baptism. See, this is uh, uh, Mark, Gospel of Mark. You can see uh, his uh, passion or uh, death and uh, um, event here is a resurrection like a soul. Here we have to ask once again about why Jesus had to go, go, to go through the passion and finally died. For a long time, Christian faith had thought innocent Jesus died instead of uh, the sin of humans, original sin of humans, called atonement or redemption. Mm -hmm. So Jesus uh, died because of us. So Jesus, you know, uh, died or get killed, got killed uh, instead of, uh, in place of uh, the original sin of humans, but which is very controversial up until today, mm -hmm. which is a theological idea. Indeed, the theology of Paul, Paul, Apostle Paul's idea. So, um, you know, because I made a, a scene because of which Jesus uh, died, how about me? That my mis responsibility for doing that and for doing this, then why Jesus died for me? This part of also past uh, the Paschal mystery. One thing very clear here is the fact that uh, Jesus lived and died, not for himself, but others. Love for others. Indeed, these uh, Christians' uh, maxim or essence, the spirit, is what uh, may be born of Jesus' uh, greatness. Yeah, love for others is simple. That's all, you know. For Christians who join Jesus' life and death, there is only one way to live and die for others, which is a difficult task as of now. Not at 2,000 years, uh, the age of Jesus, but as of now, it's also very relevant uh, commandment. So, uh, um, thus, baptism is our decision to join Jesus' salvific mission and the devotion of our life for the mission. Here, uh, we see the uh, relationship with baptism. When you baptize, that means you uh, decide that you want to join Jesus' mission, which could lead to the, uh, your death, own death. So that means uh, uh, you are baptized. That means you, uh, you know, admit that or uh, you uh, pledge that you want to devote your whole life for the mission, Jesus' a salvific mission. So don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ, Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the death through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. This is also uh, Paul's idea. So it, it is clearly... Uh, show the relationship with baptism and uh, uh, his passion. So his uh, uh, um, the ministry uh, or salvific mission has uh, really to do with uh, the baptism, which granted to everyone, including ourselves. So sacraments uh, of um, Yeah, New Testament. Sacraments of uh, the Last Supper, sacraments of uh, Eucharist and the uh, Bible, New Testament. All four Gospels to talk about the Last Supper. You, as you know that already. But in different manner, each. 
yeah, respected uh, all four Gospels written a little bit different manner. Never mention of establishment of Eucharist is John's Gospel. Although he put uh, uh, this Last Supper in three chapters long. You know, in three chapters, even three chapters, John described the, the uh, Last Supper, but never mentioned uh, of uh, this kind of institution of uh, Eucharist. The Paul, again, complained in chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, written in AD 57, quite early, right? Jesus died maybe uh, around 30. Then maybe before, you know, uh, one generation, it was written, Corinthians. So all the church, we could see the what's going on in the uh, you know, life of Christian community in uh, First uh, Corinthians like this. When you come together, according to uh, 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 Apostle Paul, it is not really to eat at the Lord's Supper. He strongly uh, condemned or, uh, you know, rebuke them and, and scold them. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, the Christ body, Jesus body, eat and drink judgment against yourselves, you know, without discernment, or without proper discernment, then you drink and then, uh, you know, eat, then it is uh, just like a judgment against you. This is what uh, Paul uh, said. In this chapter, Paul lamented his, this community, last community of sharing Jesus showed before. Indeed, uh, this, uh, um, why Paul is complaining like this? Because in all the, uh, even all the community, uh, Christian community, there is a, a rich and poor people gather themselves, you know, not uh, come together. They're separately, uh, uh, you know, gathering. Is, uh, there is no uh, uh, koinonia, koinonia meaning, meeting, uh, meaning uh, no communion, no close fellowship, no close relationship between the poor and the rich. So poor or marginalized, not uh, getting to the uh, uh, those who are in reach uh, or in higher uh, position in society, or who uh, have their own community, own gathering. Uh, to this, uh, Paul lamented, you people, you Corinthian people, this is not uh, the Lord's Supper. This is all uh, in a judgment against you. Things like that. So more a direct relation to the uh, sacrament of Eucharist is found in the feeding five thousands. You know that, right? It is in all four gospels. All writers from the four gospels were surely writing in in the light of the sacrament. Eucharist, even they use a liturgical language here. If you look at this, uh, you know, uh, stories uh, carefully, you could find like a Jesus, uh, all, uh, uh, ask it, uh, the disciple to gather the, what is left. And then, uh, uh, you know, when uh, they gather them, he, uh, Jesus, you know, took the bread and before eating, he, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call this? Blessed it and uh, give some kind of, you know, uh, praise God. So it's just the same as he did at the Last Supper. So which has a really to do with, uh, you know, uh, Eucharist, the sacrament of Eucharist, according to the biblical scholar. The gospel site the old gospel site, the stories related to food were eating more than 50 times, almost the same as, as frequent as miracle stories. We know, you know, stories of treatment and healing people, which is a quite common uh, stories in the, in the Bible, especially in, in, uh, in gospels. But 
same amount of uh, stories uh, dealt with this kind of food eating. You see, so it's amazing indeed. So uh, need we need to see the Eucharist in more extended perspective, which is Jesus eating ministry. <laughs> it's a funny, uh, it's interesting word, eating ministry. You know, maybe you remember. You see uh, Jesus parables in Jesus parable. Uh, the uh, the host invite many times uh, people you know outside. That means doesn't means it's not a story only written in the uh, uh, John nine uh, the Gospel of Johann John. Not only uh, the, the limited to the Last Supper in uh, other gospel, but that means uh, eating ministry or food or eating itself. It has to do with uh, life of Jesus itself. So that we could now, uh, the, uh, the Eucharist and sacrament, not, uh, you know, uh, relate to the, uh, the Last Supper alone, but his whole uh, ministry in his life. Maybe uh, we think about it. Maybe it's a little bit different to what you have been taught. Over the century, partly due to the influence of uh, Roman culture, we have uh, uh, particularized and ritualized the Eucharist. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by particularized? Particular is, a, you know, maybe uh, you have a cross, you have once. Uh, uh, um, dimension is a, a vertical, and uh, the other is a horizontal. But we have a top-down uh, vertical relationship when we have a mass Eucharist. The the community, the people of God, the, the lay people, this kind of observer. You know, remain observer. Who are the kind of uh, the presider? Always. Uh, Clutch. So this I mean, this sentence mean uh, from the uh, very much dry uh, the structure of a uh, uh, Roman style of ritual, we only have verticalized and ritualized the Eucharist. We have to reinvent the Eucharistic celebration as a community meal. Here, once again, we have a meal community meal as a Eucharistic celebration in which the meal share itself, the community meal becomes the body and the blood of Christ, which in turn make us who share the meal, the body of the Christ. What do you mean by this? Who share the meal in the community become Christ, the body of Christ. So uh, in uh, during my session of this uh, course, I, uh, you know, uh, mentioned, explained many times, how could people of God become the body of Christ? Not the, uh, from the side of uh, Jesus, not the, from the side of Christ come to us, but instead, we, as a people of God, come to the body of Christ at the time of participation or in the Eucharist. Think about it. So when you, uh, you know, remember uh, the uh, Rumen Jeshum, uh, number uh, uh, 12, I think it's number 12, or 32, there, uh, you know, all people of God have no error in terms of their faith. The whole people of God led by, blessed by the Holy Christ. Remember, that is a, you know, a, a, a sense, a sense of fidelium, sense of fidei, sense of, uh, you know, faith of the whole people of God. It has something to do with that Roman Gentium's uh, statement as such. 
Uh, so becoming the body of Christ and living that mi mystery. So it is a mystery, isn't it? Not only Jesus, uh, the um, passion and death, a resurrection, but also when we remember him, when we uh, celebrate him, when we eat him as a community meal in which we are becoming the body of Christ, then so what? We are the uh, Christ? Oh my God. What am I supposed to do then? You want me to get killed in the, the, the cross? So becoming the, the, the Christ and living that mystery, we become a community. So a Catholic uh, really focus very much on community before I, like before I uh, mentioned many times, expressing love in mutual service, sharing all that we are and we have, and being ready even to give our lives if necessary. Even we, we abandon our life for others if necessary. It is time to ask ourselves whether we have overly mythologized a basic community action, mm -hmm. a meal. So the don't be uh, mythologized, don't overly uh, mythologize the basic community action, simply meal, you know, coming together and having a meal in a community is the basic community action through which we could become the body of Christ. Who said that? He said that. Maybe some of you recognize him or she or she. Is Michael Amaraldos, who's a, um, a good friend of uh, Oral Forum, best friend of uh, you know Asian young ones like uh, Amanda, Lindu. Uh, both of them, uh, maybe uh, how many times you join uh, uh, our programs, I don't know. But uh, some of you maybe recognize them. Uh, at the time, he's uh, young, uh, 12, uh, 2012. Uh, I conducted uh, this uh, Asian Youth Academy in Seoul, I think. Yeah. Um, it, almost 10 years ago. Now he's uh, mid 80. At the time, uh, mid 70. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Michael Amados, uh, what he said is sort of about this one. Uh, he's a director of, I don't know if he's retired, I, I don't know, but uh, director of the Institute uh, for Dialogue with the Cultures and Religions in Chennai, India. Expert on uh, intercultural and interreligious dialogue and spirituality. Has been a, a consultant to the Pontifical Council for Culture and Other Religion, meaning, a Pontifical meaning Vatican Council, huh? whatever Vatican Council for culture and other religions. According to Pope Francis, he's quote unquote, a good theologian, great theologian, if not great theologian, is a really good uh, theologian. He was suffer uh, from CDF, uh, a congregation of uh, doctrine and faith. Uh, so he got uh, a lot of stress, uh, and, uh, but he got over uh, by, uh, you know, well depending himself by submitting uh, some uh, uh, writings, his writes up. Why my uh, book is all right, you know, uh, following the uh, uh, Catholic tradition and so on. So he, uh, yeah, survived. He's now very happy. And also, and uh, consultants uh, uh, to the uh, World Council of Churches, at WCC, many of uh, uh, you knows already, WCC, uh, one of the uh, representative whole ecumenical church group uh, in Protestant churches, indeed. He is the author of 20 books and more than uh, 300 articles in various languages. So Eucharist, uh, um, a meal together. Mm -hmm. 
The community remains a largely an observer, if I told you, when we have a mass or Eucharist, remain uh, the community as a whole, or especially lay people, people of the pew, in the pew uh, uh, remain largely an observer, not participants. We have to rethink the sacramental theology from the West in which the community is actively and fully, not merely symbolically uh, in verb, you know. So uh, we cannot uh, uh, find any, uh, you know, active or full participation, the current uh, Roman uh, type of uh, the Eucharist, which is why, you know, so we need to have some kind of what we call uh, inculturated uh, 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 the Eucharistic way. Uh, to celebrate uh, Jesus' uh, body and uh, body of Christ, we may have may have to abandon a certain uh, verticalism I mentioned already, experiencing God not in the heaven above, but the creation and whole creation, including human community. After all, God has become human in Jesus Christ and has enabled us to encounter him in human actions like eating together. So uh, before the basic uh, community action is uh, uh, the eating together. Here, God has become a human in Jesus Christ, kind of a high, high deliberate, you know, hybridity. Um, I will uh, uh, explain this hybridity, hybridization uh, next time, next week, which is uh, really important. It's simply God uh, as a, a, a different uh, uh, nature, become human as a different nature, but we cannot uh, uh, define for good, but it's changing. So uh, anyway, this uh, kind of a two, uh, uh, nature, you know, exchange, conversation, and dialogue. So uh, God has become a human in uh, Jesus Christ and has enabled us to encounter him in human actions like eating together. Mm -hmm. The goal of Asian spirituality is uh, cosmotheandrism. Uh, by now, I believe uh, many of you uh, uh, may be familiar with this uh, term, term uh, cosmotheandrism. In the word of Lyman Panikar, uh, Amalado uh, uh, citing uh, Panikar, quoting Panikar, integrating uh, together the cosmos, the universe, theos, the divine, and the anthropos, the human. Actually, we celebrate this uh, mystery in the Eucharist way. Eucharist when the bread and wine and we ourselves become divine. He also mentioned this mm -hmm, at the body of Christ, uh, not only uh, among others, but also before, you know, uh, different, uh, some, some different, uh, the biblical scholar I chosen, I cite here, same idea. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we, uh, God experience like this uh, integrated way, like a universe, uh, divine and human come together, then uh, we become uh, a body of Christ, divine, which is mystery. We cannot fully uh, apprehend it, this mystery. Mm -hmm. Jesus is a whole maker. Maybe uh, sound familiar, of course, we did uh, last week. Divine love poured into space-time, rises in consciousness and erupts in the life of Jesus of Nazareth, becoming the pledge of our future in the rise in Christ. I am with you always until the end of the world. What do you mean by this? If you... Uh, interpreted uh, it as a 
kind of uh, evolution way, that means I will be ceaselessly uh, changing following because I, I follow you all uh, the uh, creations, creatures. That means I'm with you always until the end of the world. We can read uh, the history of our uh, 13 billion, 1.3 billion year old universe as a rising up of divine love incarnate, which burst a force in the person of Jesus who reveal love's urge uh, toward wholeness through reconciliation, mercy, peace. This is the what is the love this is about. Forgiveness. Jesus is the uh, love of God incarnate, the whole maker who shows the way of evolution toward unity in love. In Jesus, God comes to us from the future to be our future. Christian life then is a commitment to love, to give birth to God in one's own life and to become a midwives, you know, uh, to take a baby in uh, this evolving cosmos. So we are to be whole makers of love too in a world of changing, you see? So I use this uh, uh, one with different, uh, you know, uh, photo of uh, Ilya Delio with a little bit different uh, um, idea. I will fully, a little bit uh, uh, elaborate it next week, which is very important at the time of um, coronavirus, when this course possible because of the coronavirus, because of the uh, untact, because of the Zoom call, Zoom webinar like this. So uh, what is the uh, um, met, what is the kind of um, nature or identity? or a cyborg, that so we will deal with that, following her idea. Will technology soon bring uh, humanity to a new age of transcendence? She responds, or she asserted that innovations that merge man and machine are already making parts of uh, that dream of reality. So now it's all taking place. So man, uh, man and the machine are merging, merged. But the Delia, uh, Delio warned if that technological revolution continued without uh, the guidance of religion, it would sink humanity into an eater of meaningless. So, um, before I, we talk about the separation of state and religion, of course, it has little to do here. It's a little bit uh, distance, little distance. If I bring uh, that things here again, but how religion guide uh, the, uh, this kind of evolution, evolve, evolving world, including the political legend and all, uh, every single uh, corner of our life or political life. How could religion invert this? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, um, almost the same issue to the separation or union or uh, the state and religion. She said here, guidance of religion, how? She didn't tell us. Yeah, it's, this part or this law also according to uh, Ilya Delio. Jesus was free in love because he lived in the truth and authenticity we heard many times, you know, this part. So he was integrated one in whom divine light, God's light and love flowed free through him into the cosmos. 
rather than speaking of two nature united in one person, it is more proper to speak of cosmodiandric whole. She also mentioned cosmodiandric. Maybe he got, uh, she got the idea from, uh, you see the uh, alignment panica again. But here we need to uh, uh, see uh, this one. Two nature united one person. Ever since the uh, Catholic Church influenced by the Platon, Neoplato, it was uh, the, the Saint August who have uh, clearly the dualistic worldview like a soul and body, the heaven and earth and the sacred and profane or sacred and uh, in the earthly, uh, the worldly secular. This kind of dualistic world be coming from all the way from the Saint Augustine, of course, he influenced very much uh, uh, by the Plato philosopher, uh, maybe 2000, yeah, Plato living uh, maybe 2000 years ago, 2500 years ago. I don't know, but anyway, he, uh, that, that kind of, yeah, after that, uh, Thomas Aquinas uh, take a little bit uh, uh, different angle so that uh, Thomas Aquinas uh, not uh, be fully appreciate uh, the Plato. Uh, she, uh, rather than he accept uh, the Thomas Aquinas, you see, I mean, uh, Aristoteles. Aristoteles, um, divine clearly a being you know substance substance means has two two things so a little bit about philosophy substance we call substance which uh, include it's like a form and matter you see so uh, something you know substantial things is uh, exist out there this kind of idea make a to nature. So God as a divinity or Jesus is human. Uh, this is totally, uh, you know, fully uh, divine and fully human. There is no in between once or four. So this is a, a totally influenced by the Aristotle, totally influenced by the Thomas Aquinas and following his, uh, followed by the, his disciple. Scholatism. This is more in, uh, you know, theology. I better stop this. Um, anyway, uh, the Delio, Ilya Delio said, now we don't need to speak of two nature united in one person. We fed up with this many times. It's not quite relevant in the time of, you know, uh, uh, quantum physics. You see, everything is changing, and uh, we are also uh, changing, evolving. And rather, we uh, need to have some kind of a cosmos whole, not a union of fixed essence. She criticized this idea because it's a nature is not the things to be fixed once and for all. It's changing. It's not union of fixed essence, but an ongoing dance of divinity, humanity, and cosmos, which is amplified in the person of Jesus Christ. So when we become the body of Christ, it doesn't mean that we become a saint, become a, a, a God. It's kind of uh, the mysteries, mystery of kind of uh, the relationship. His, his death resurrection evoked a new consciousness, God's eminent presence and empowering love toward wholeness and unity. Becoming whole is not, you know, total of uh, the mathematics uh, accumulation of the number. The becoming whole is kind of uh, organic, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't uh, want to use that term, entity, but uh, there is uh, is a language a very uh, language limitation. Have to use that one. It's a whole uh, kind of uh, a 
um, entity, uh, something like that. So here uh, we must be careful. The distinction of Jesus, uh, therefore, is not a mysterious union of natures. So you don't much talk about, you don't need to talk about anymore about mystery. You know, being mystery, mysterious is, is not, uh, we are trying to seek, we are trying to, to, to find, we are trying to, to you know, uh, um, the looking for. Everything is, uh, you know, a mystery in a Catholic, uh, you know, church, because we have a Paschal mystery. Of course, we have Paschal mystery. But here, uh, in the Adelio, see this in a little bit a different way. Not a mysterious union of nature, which is uh, very much Aristotle. You see, so we need to have an essence. We have, uh, you know, a substance. This kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 philosophical idea is not relevant anymore, but a radical empowerment of divine love marked by the new uh, spirit of creative newness. So what is an uh, uh, important one is why Jesus is important? Jesus is uh, uh, dead 2,000 years ago, but because of his Paschal mystery, we have the future. Jesus Christ has come to uh, uh, on our way to the future. It's a newness. It's a spirit of creative newness as a divine love. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. There is uh, another one. Yeah, group discussion. Uh, Okay, all right, theme of group discussion. What is your understanding of Paschal mystery? How much does it influence your life? Is it okay, the Eucharist or Mass, to be understood eating together? What is your desirable way to do Mass for you? So many questions. Number three, uh, by your becoming Christ, uh, what would you say about this? There's a lot of questions uh, for uh, today. 